So in the last tutorial, we created this map right here, but it, you can't do anything, you just walk around and that's it, there's, there's nothing you can do. So in today's tutorial, we're going to look at how you can actually create an NPC, a non-player character that you can interact with and will say something to you. So let us get straight into it. So to start off, if you look back up here, if you remember in the previous tutorial, we clicked this button to edit the display or the looks of the map. But if you click on this one, this allows us to create events. Now, an event is sort of like the mechanics of the game. So, anything that involves like something happening, an NPC perhaps, like a monster, all of those are going to be events. And they're going to be displayed on your map. So, to create an event, first we're going to have this clicked. Next, simply go to one of these tiles. You, as you can see, you can highlight them. I want you to just double click on one of these tiles and it should bring up this big crazy looking event creator thing. So let's get straight into creating an NPC. First thing is we gotta decide how this event is going to be triggered. So when an event is triggered, all the stuff that is going to eventually be placed in this big open empty area right here is done through the trigger. So if we look right here we have this thing called trigger and it's set to action button. Now this means when the player uses the action button, which is going to be like enter or the keystroke Z, this will trigger the event. Furthermore, we also have the priority. Now the priority is going to be where the event is positioned relative to the player. So let's set it the same as characters, which means it's going to be on the same plane as the player characters. Finally, we have the image. Now the image is going to be what the event looks like on the map. If we look right here, RPG Maker MV already has tons of characters we can use to do stuff. So let's go to one of these random characters like Actor 2, this person right here. Let's click, on, let's click on the middle person. And here we have them. They're in our image section. So now, to make this event do something, we have to add something to the contents area right here. So to add something, simply double click. And it's going to bring up this huge thing with all these different choices for what you can add. There's even multiple tabs. So we have all the stuff right here. Go to tab 2. We have all the stuff here. Go to tab 3. We have all the stuff here. And... It doesn't matter how long you spend making RPGs, you'll probably never get used to all the crazy stuff right here. But for the time being, we're going to focus on the first thing right here, which is show text. And this is what you use to like create dialogue. Well, let's input the dialogue we want to appear when we interact with this event. So let's input, hello, I am an event. And that's it. If you want to preview how it looks, simply click this preview button and it gives you a basic understanding of what it's going to look like. We can position it at the bottom of the screen, the middle, or the top. I just say leave it on the bottom. And then we can also set so it has a window background, a dim background, or a transparent background. For the time being, I say just, I say just leave it at window, and that's good to go. Let's hit OK. Let's hit OK, and our event is done. And as you can see, our event displays right here on the screen. So let's run our game and see how this event turns out. So here we are inside the game. We're moving around and all that normal stuff. But this time, we have this person just standing right there. So let's go up to them and push enter while we're looking at them. And when we do so, it will open up a dialog box and it will say, Hello, I am an event. If we hit enter again, the dialog box closes and the event ends. Now, let's add more stuff to this event. So let's go back to the event, double click on it, and we'll be brought back to the event page again. So now let's go and we can add more stuff like 
show another text. So this is another dialogue. And there we have another dialogue. But let's try another cool thing we do. We also have this thing called show choices. And this is gonna show multiple choices and have each one do something else. So the choices are yes, no, or whatever. So let's make choice one be, I like hot dogs. And then make choice two be, I like hamburgers. I hope that's spelled correctly. Anyway, when we do that, we can give the player two choices. And when we hit okay, it's gonna have two little sections right here in which we can put in different things. So for example, if we say I like hot dogs, this person will say, I hate hot dogs. Ew, like that. And then if we go to the hamburger section and we double click inside of here, we can create another show text that says, I love hamburgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so each of these events are gonna be played in order. So first this dialogue, next this dialogue, then it's gonna show choices if choice one is chosen, it's gonna say, I hate hot dogs, ew. If choice two is chosen, it's gonna say, I love hamburgers, yay. So let's once again hit okay. Let's go to our game and let's test it out this thing we did. So let's go to our event. Let's go interact with them. And now once again, they'll say, hello, I am an event. Next, they'll say, this is another dialogue and our choices will appear. And let's say, I like hamburgers. I love hamburger, yay. And then once again, the event ends. Now the final thing you may want to know about when creating an NPC is the ability to add a face next to the dialogue. So if we go back to one of these dialogues by clicking on it, then hitting space, we can edit one of the existing things. So if we look at this place right here, it says face, and if we double click on it, we can select one of these pre-built faces inside RPG Maker MB. So if we look around, we should find the actor 2 face right here for this person, which we did before. So let's double click on it, and boom, now we have this person's face in the event. As you can see right here, there's also a very faded line right here. Now this line represents where the dialogue box is gonna end. So if we did something like some dialogue that was way past the line right here, then this dialogue's gonna get cut off right here. So we gotta make sure that if you do go past this line, you do a enter space like so, so it continues on the next line by doing blah, 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 blah. And then we can preview it by previewing it and seeing that, hey, it doesn't get cut off anymore and it continues down here again. You have four lines for dialogue, any more dialogue, and you probably either want to make it so that you can do it down here for another dialogue, or you just make it smaller. So once again, let's go add this face, and let's add it for all four of the dialogues, like so. Boop -boop -boop -boop. Hello, I'm an event. This is another dialogue. Uh, I like hot dogs. I hate hot dogs. Whoa. I hate hot dogs. I wow, okay. Well then, until next time, RPG Maker tutorial out. So, in the previous tutorial, we created this NPC that talks to us, and that's all we did. But we never really fixed the original problem, which is, we have all these towns, buildings, mountains here, but how do we actually get inside these towns, or mountains, or buildings, or whatever? To do so, we're going to create a new map and teach how to transfer the player to that new map. So before we actually do anything, we actually got to first create a new map. So to do so, go down to your game title right here, right click on it, and hit new. And this will bring up like a new menu creator thingy. So we can make the name town1. And that's it. And we'll go to OK, and the map will be created. But let's say we don't want these settings and we want to change the map settings. All you have to do is go back to our town1, hit space when it's highlighted, and it'll bring up the settings again. So let's make it so the tile set is outside as opposed to overworld. Our previous map had the overworld tile set, which means it had all like the small towns, the mountains, and it just basically be a map that the player used to travel long distances. On the other hand, the outside or inside tile sets will be for like general locations that are more local. So the outside would be for like a local map that you're currently inside of, like the town we're gonna be creating, and so we're gonna be using that. Let's also make it so the width is something like 30. And let's make it so the height is about 20, just to make it more space. And finally, we also want to create a display name. Now this can be a name that's going to be displayed in the top left when the player enters a map. So we'll call this Town Ruby. Oh, whoa, there we go. And so we'll hit OK, and our town will expand, get bigger, and as you can see in the left, we have a different tile set available to be used for our tiles. So I'm gonna go quickly create a map. One final thing is that if you hold control and scroll backwards, you actually zoom out for your tile creation. 
or you can just push these plus and minus magnifying glasses on the top right here to zoom in or zoom out. Anyway, speed up, activate. And our map is pretty much done. So now let's actually make it so the player can get to this map by going doing something in this map. So let's zoom back into this part right here. Let's go into our event creation mode and let's double click on top of the map. And now we're gonna create a new type of event. So first thing we have to do is set the priority to below characters. And this means the player has to be standing on top of the event to, before it activates. Next, let's set it so the trigger is player touch. This means the player is going to walk on top of this event. When he's done and he's standing on top of the event, then it's going to transfer him to wherever he needs to go. On the other hand, if he did action button, this would mean the player would be standing on top of it, then click enter or Z to actually make the event run. So in this example, we're actually going to be using player touch. So now we're going to go to our content. We're going to go inside, go to the second tab, go to the first one right here, which is called transfer player. Click on this. Now we're going to select where the player is going to be transferred. So click this right here. And now we're going to have a list of all of our maps. Just two right now. So we're going to click on town one. We're going to click on this new entrance spot right here. Then we're going to set the direction to left. Since we want the player to be looking left when the transfer is done. We'll set the fade to black. Though you can also use white. Or you could remove it completely. Though black is a good standard way to do it. So we'll hit OK. And this event is actually done. We do not need an image because we want this to be invisible and see the player just click on it or walk on it without actually having to know that there's anything going on. So let's go ahead and hit the OK. Now let's copy the event. We'll right click, we'll hit copy. Now we can just go up to one of these other tiles and hit paste and paste it on top of all of the town. So we can also do control V to just paste it faster. And now when the player walks on top of any part of this town, it'll transfer them to the town one map. So now in the town one map, let's actually go to this tile right here. Let's double click on it. And let's also create another transfer event for moving back. So once again, we'll do the trigger, player touch. We'll go to the contents. We'll go to the second tab, transfer player, go choose a place. We'll choose map 001. We'll choose this spot right here. We'll make sure they're looking down and then we'll fade the black. We'll hit OK. We'll hit OK. We'll save and now we'll run our game to test it out. So now here we are inside of our game, we're walking around and we're gonna go into this map. So all we gotta do is walk on top of it and we go transferred into the map. So now we're in town Ruby and as you can see, we're actually inside the map we created. Now let's go back outside by just walking back to this part right here and it transfers us back to the overworld. And that's all you need to do. But let's try one final thing. Now, if you're in event mode, if you right click on a tab by right clicking on it like so, we can go to quick event creation and actually create a transfer event for us. It'll ask us to select a location. So we can select one of the locations. We can select a direction. So we can select a direction. And when we hit OK, it'll actually let us create our own quick event. And as you can see, it's pretty much identical to what we created. The only difference is they have this play sound effect for move one. And this makes it so that there's a sound effect that it plays when we transfer through the event. So let's actually take this and add it into our own transfer event. So let's right click on it, we'll hit copy. And now we can actually go to this event and we can just delete it entirely. So we'll right click on it, delete. Now we'll go back to our own event. We will right click right here and we'll hit paste. And we'll paste it on top of this event right here. So now finally we can delete these other three events. So delete, delete, delete. Now we can copy and paste this new one on top of all these. And I did so just by hitting control C then control V as a quick thing to do it. Now we'll have a sound effect that plays during our transfer. So that's all we can do for that situation. But say we're in our game and we want to go somewhere that we can't really walk on top of like these mountains right here. As you can see, if we push into them, we can't really walk on top of them. So even if we did use one of those events, they'd actually not activate because we aren't walking on top of them. So all we'd really have to do is actually do something similar to what we did for these events, only we combine it with what we learned from the NPC. So if we paste one of these events here,
here, we can go into it and go to the priority and the trigger. So let's set the priority to the same as characters, and this will make it so that the player pushes against it, they can actually activate the event without really having to step on top of it to do the player touch trigger. Alternatively, we can set this to action button, and this would be the same as our NPC, which means we just have to be looking towards it, push the action button, and the event will activate. So if we paste this event all over our mountains right here, and realistically probably just put it on one side, but if we want to make it so that mountains can be activated from all sides, we'd simply do that. Now run our game again. Now, when we go to our mountains, we can walk into them, and if we push the enter button, it'll transfer us to our town, because we didn't that. Now run our game again. Now, when we go to our mountains, we can walk into them, and if we push the enter button, it'll transfer us to our town because we didn't really make a mountain map but you get the point and that's all for this video if you enjoyed please be sure to give this video a thumbs up please be sure to subscribe leave a comment in the way you see we want to see a new beginner's tutorial until next time rpg maker tutorial out so we have our town here and it's a beautiful looking town i guess the problem is there are no people in here but we know how to solve that situation because if we go back to our original map, we'll find, yeah, we know how to create an NPC. They're just standing right there, and just standing right there, not really doing anything at all. In fact, how, how do we make an NPC like this one move around? It doesn't have to be in a specific pattern, or perhaps you want to like run around circles for an extended period of time. And in today's tutorial, we are going to be learning how to do that. So let's go to our Town 1 map, and let's just get straight into it. So to start off, let's review how you create an NPC. We create an event, we set an image, we'll set to any random image like this person right here, we'll make sure the priority is the same as characters, their trigger is the action button, and we'll give them some dialogue to say. So we'll go to tab one, show text, this is a dialogue. There we go. And now we have our NPC. But now, how do we make this guy move? And the answer is, this little square place right here called the autonomous movement and here we can set it so our event is moving around so if you may notice it's set to fixed right now which means it's gonna be standing in a fixed position but we have three other choices random approach and custom now random you could probably guess he's gonna move in a random direction approach that means he's gonna approach the player and custom means we're gonna set up our own custom movement route so to start off let's focus on random now, as you can guess, he's gonna move a random position or a random direction every certain amount of whatever. So to determine how fast and how often he's gonna move, we're gonna use the speed and the frequency things down here. Now speed, this is gonna be how fast he moves from one tile to the other tile. So as you may notice on our map right here, we have all these things separated into tiles like this. And if you may have noticed, when playing your game, your player and all the NPCs and basically everything sticks to a certain tile. So, this guy is going to move to this tile maybe, then maybe this tile next time, then maybe this one. Now, if you set it so your speed is say like, super fast, number 6, very 4 times x fast, that means he's going to like zoom in to each tile, he's going to be pretty much teleporting from one tile to the next tile. He's not going to be doing it very often, but he's going to be doing it when he does do it very fast. So if we set it something like slower or the slowest possible, that means he's gonna move like very slow from one tile to the next and like with normal it's gonna be more like a natural movement and like I said the faster is gonna be the it's instantaneous super fast super crazy tile movement so for this example since we have a random movement type let's set it so it's about a little slower since we want to make it so this an NPC appears just like wandering around not really doing anything so he's moving sort of slower now comes a frequency, which as you can probably guess, this is how frequent they will move from tile to tile. So if we have it on say the highest, this means they'll be constantly moving. They'll move to one tile, the next, the next, the next, and the next, the next, and just keep moving on and on and on. On the other hand, if we have something like normal, this means we're gonna go to a tile, wait like, I don't know, a certain like tile, wait, tile, wait, tile, wait, tile, wait, just like that. Now if that's in like lowest or the lowest frequency, it'd be tile, wait a good period of time, then next tile, wait a, wait a good period of time again, then another movement. And so it's going to be a very low frequency in which they move. So don't get these two confused. Remember, speed is going to be how fast they move from one tile to the next, and frequency is going to be how often they do move from one tile to the next. So well, like I said, we have this random guy who just appears to be wandering around. 
So let's set him to have a pretty slow speed and a pretty slow frequency. Now let's go test him out in our game by going to our town map. So let's go enter in our town right here. And when we come out, we will find our guy right over here. And as you can see, he's just wandering around. He's moving a little. He just saw him move down. He moved down again. Maybe he's going to move to left or right this time. Hopefully he will. Another bad thing you might want to keep in mind is that when you do have a random movement person, they probably want to be in a more open area. If you make them in a very enclosed area, that means they're not going to have very many options to move around. And thus it's going to either force them to go somewhere else or make it appear they're not moving at all since they will just be stuck in a certain position. So that's all for this type. Let's go into the next type of movement we can create. So the next type is going to be the approach type. And for the most part, you won't really use this for any typical NPC, but you may use this in the future events that we'll go over later. But for the time being, approach is going to be an event that makes it so the NPC approaches a player. Now, whenever you do use this, I would recommend using the highest frequency. So that means it's going to be constantly moving. And if you want to follow the player, or maybe it's an enemy that's trying to attack the player, you want to be moving as fast as possible, or at least moving as frequently as possible. Now, for the speed itself, it depends on the NPC. We'll set it to normal for now. And let's go test out how this looks in our game. So once again, let's go into an our blah blah, blah I might say enter into our beautiful town. But here we have it. Our NPC is going a little crazy, but here he is. He's coming after us, sort of anyway. It's not the most precise following procedure thingy they go through. But as you can see, they are indeed trying to catch up to us. So let's run around over here. Oh, they're coming over here. Let's go. Oh, we're trapped. We're trapped. They have us. No. And finally comes the probably easiest to use, which is a custom. Now this is gonna let you use this route button right here, and this is gonna let you set a custom route for your NPC. So let's go click on this route button, and it's gonna bring up this huge, weird, awesome looking movement controls thingy. Now you can think of this as sort of like the events in which you're gonna click on one of these buttons, it's gonna add it to the list, then he's gonna go through each event of the list and then do all of it. So if we say did move down, move down, move right, move right, move up, move up, move left, move left, that'd be sort of like a circle. So down, right, up, left. If you look down here, we have the options, which are going to be repeat movements, which of course this means once you get to the bottom of the list, they'll go straight back up to the top of the list. We may also want to use skip if cannot move, which means if they get into like a situation where they hit a wall or they can't move because of bad planning or whatever, it's just going to skip that movement. Otherwise, if they do get stuck and you have this unclicked, that means they're going to be just stuck there until they can move. And if they can't ever move, then they're stuck there forever. So just for safety precautions, you might want to keep this checked. Now the final check is faded out for different purposes we'll learn about it later. And we also have all these other things. Now a lot of these are going to be very, very complex. We'll learn about them later. But for the time being, you may want well to focus on move down, move left, move right, move up. Move left, right for these diagonal ones. Move at random, move towards player. Turn down to like turn left, turn right, just turn in a certain direction. And if you really get complex about it, you can, but we won't. So we're going to hit OK. We're going to hit OK. We're going to make sure this path is clear. So like, remember, we did down, down, right, right, up, up, left, left. And it looks like perfect to me. He's going to do a big circle around these rocks. So let's test it out by playing our game. So finally, let's go back into our very amazing town. Let's go to this guy and look at him go. He's running around the rocks like we told him to. So we're just going in one big circle down down right right up up left left down down right right up up left left if you recall his frequency is still on the highest form so that means he's constantly moving and he has a normal speed so he's moving at a pretty decent speed not too fast but not too slow and if we want to talk to him we just get in his path and say hey oh 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 ooh, yeah remember he is skip if cannot move so if we try and get in front of him he's, he's just gonna move keep moving this is gonna be a little hard but ah i gotcha gotcha oh he's getting away no gaha this is a dialogue. We got him. And then he's going to just start running in a circle some more. So yeah. Now let's go over one final thing. So lastly, we have these couple things right here, which are called the options. Now pretty much, let's explain what they do. This check mark makes it so they have their walking animation while they're actually walking. So if you may notice, a couple of these characters have these walking animation frames that you can use. If you uncheck this, that will mean he'll just look like this the entire time he's moving. And you may want that if you want to disable the animation for whatever reason. Maybe they're got, I don't know, they got captured and they can't move out of the thing they're captured in. Or perhaps they got like, I don't know, I had an example but I forgot it. Anyway, for the most part, if you have a human or moving NPC, then I'd suggest clicking this on. But next comes the stepping option. Now this means they're going to have the stepping animation when they're not moving. So if you click this, that means if they're standing still, 
they have the stepping animation. So you can think of it as sort of the opposite of the walking animation. Walking, this is for having animation when you're actually walking. Stepping is for having animation when you're standing still. You also have the directional fix, which means they won't really change their direction while they're moving around. So if we took this, that means he'll always be looking downward throughout his entire movement cycle. And finally we have through, which means they can move through objects pretty much. And if you have that checked, that means they'll move through walls, move through anything, and nothing can stop them. So that's all for this video. What do you want to see in a future tutorial? If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Please be sure to subscribe. Please be sure to comment below what you liked and what you want to see happen. Until next time, RPG Maker Tutorial. Uh, yeah, this this guy, he's he's pretty weird. Bye. All right, so here we are back in town, Ruby. Uh, hello, you random person. I see this guy still doing his cool little thing. That, that's awesome, bro. And oh, um, well, hey, hey, hello, man. How, how are you doing? We need doors. We need doors. <laughs> so like, I th I think we need doors. So like, to start off. I guess we should first create an actual room to be used as the inside of one of these buildings. So let's get straight into that. So if you recall, when we create a new map, we go up here and we click new map, but we're not going to do that this time. Instead, we're going to do something else. We're going to go to one of these maps right here. We're going to right click on it. And we can still do new map. So let's do it and let's create a new map from on top of the town one map. Let's name it town one room one for whatever reason. And we will hit OK. And now when we do that, we'll find that, hey, this map is sort of underneath our town one map. And we can actually close and expand it using a plus and minus sign right there. So this is happening because each map in our little map editor section right here can actually function as a folder. So it's not only a map, it's a folder map. Yay. So that's how it pretty much works. So I would recommend whenever you create like a town or maybe a dungeon, you'd probably want to make one map, the base map, then all the succeeding maps, such as rooms, doors, second floors, etc., are all sub maps stored within the main map. So you can make your map little thing organized. Cause you know, when you actually create a real game, it's gonna easily have up to maybe 60, 70, or maybe even 100 maps. And you're gonna want to have some way to keep things organized, even if you only are only pretending. So to do so, you will make these little folders. And for this example, we'll be putting all of the town house rooms inside our town one map folder thingy. So let's click on our town one room one and let us just simply create a really quick map. So I forgot to also go back in here. Let's set it so the tile set is gonna be inside. So it's gonna be doing the inside of a house. We'll hit okay. We'll click on one of these random inside tile sets, select the ceiling, we'll just surround the entire thing real quickly, oh, and then we'll do like the ground with like this tile set, we'll do a little boop, and then we'll do a little exit part right here, and we'll just call that our little thing for now, we'll also make a wall at the side, so yay, it's gonna be a really quick, simple little house room thingy. So let's make a door that goes in to our room right here. So let's go back to town one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into event mode. We're gonna make a door for say this house right here. And once again, the door is gonna be just a simple quick event. So right click, quick event creation and the door. So we'll get to choose the door image. We'll have a whole list of all these door images. So door one or door two is our files. Just stick with door one, select one of these doors, say this door right here choose the location it's going to put us to. So we're going to be put into town one, room one on this tile right here. We're going to hit okay and it will be perfect to go. So finally, let's go to town one, room one. Let's go here. Let's right click and create another quick, tra tra quick, quick event creation. Go to transfer. This time we'll transfer back to outside. So right here, we'll be looking downward and we'll hit Okay, now let's actually go and test out our door. And so let's go down here and we'll find our door perfectly positioned right here. Let's go inside and we'll find, hey, we're in our room now. And now we can go back outside, simply walk in this little space and yay, we're back outside. And yeah, it's actually that simple. Now here's a few tips for creating doors. As you may notice in the tutorial in which I actually created this map, I added all these like black spaces right here. You can find these in the section B and you gotta find them right like right here. So like this one, this one, this one, this one. And you wanna choose what corresponds to the type of door you're using. So if you use this one, this rounder one, as you see right here, we could say put this right here instead of that thing. So boop, that is not going away. I'm doing something wrong. What is going on? Please help me. Okay, there we go. Boom. And then we can go and create an, the, one of the rounder doors. So quick event creation. Oh, 
door, and we'll choose the round one this time, like this, hit OK, because we don't care, and it's done. So, that's what you'd want to do for that. Also, what you want to keep in mind is that if you want to make, say, a door that you can open by pushing an action key instead of just touching it, you'd click an action button. Yay! If you want to make a door that actually makes it so that when you transfer, you look in a certain direction, we just go into the bottom transfer event, select the direction to down, left, up, right, whatever you wish, click on that, we can customize our fade by clicking that, and we are good to go. And that's really all there is for making doors. And that's really all you really need to do for making a town. Just set up all the doors, 